<coughs> Alright, so uh, we're back for another video. Um, at this point, you can see I kind of left off with the UV unwrapping uh, from that first video. Uh, remember, UV unwrapping really is just the process of uh, taking your model, and you see how the model itself is fine, but we did put seams on it, so that way we could create a separate set of kind of geometry, if you will, right? You can kind of see this is basically like this. So it is kind of a it is a kind of a geometry, if you will. But what we've done is we've kind of duplicated it here, and we've kind of peeled it off based on where the seams are at, and kind of flattened it out to be two dimensional, right? And this tells a two dimensional image how to go on the surface, right? And we saw we kind of had that cool little distortion grid attachment that we could do on the first one, right? Um, that was really just one of those things where we went to you know kind of. Um, uh, right here, right, and we could um, create a new image. And when we went to create a new image, right, we could pick the resolution, we could pick the UV grid type. Um, you can kind of see it in the other video, and I put it at like I think 2048 by 2048. Uh, and that gives us a nice little grid here, right? Uh, and then, of course, uh, what we did is we made sure to go over to, um, and I'll open this up a little bit, we made sure to go over to the uh, little kind of um, red box right here, right? Uh, not red box, red uh, red sphere, um, right? And that's our materials. And we went to the base color section, and we clicked on here. And once we clicked on there, kind of make it a little bigger so we can see it more here. Uh, and you'll kind of see what we can do is we can click on this to go to base color, right? And that basically allows us to open up our image. In fact, if I want to, I can click on that X, and you see it gets rid of the image. Um, and you can even um, kind of uh, click back on this image texture again, right? And you could do disconnect or remove, right? And that will actually totally remove it and clear it out, right? Um, but basically, remember, you can create a new image from here um, just by going to that one right there, new image. And like I said, you can kind of pick the resolution. I did 2040 by 2048. And then you tell it to generate a UV grid. That way, we actually get this guy. And then you just make sure to, uh, remember, you can always make your, uh, I have a quite a small monitor I'm recording this on, right? Because um, I'm not doing it at home, doing it at school. Um, but remember, we can always grab on kind of these menus and make them bigger or smaller, right, to give you a little more space when you need it. Um, so in this case, uh, we clicked on the uh, kind of uh, red sphere down here, and this brings up our material, right? Uh, and it's just the default material that's on everything, which is good for this, what we want to do. Um, we'll eventually have multiple materials made, one for the crab, one for the armor, but for right now, we're fine with the default single material. Uh, by default, it's set to principled, which is good. It's a great material, so we're fine with having that be your default. Um, but we do want to plug that checkerboard, right? And I did this in the last video, but it never hurts to see it again, right, guys? Um, so we go to, to the base color, because that's just the color, right? And we click on the little dot, and that brings up this set of options right here, kind of like with our modifiers. And we just want to attach an image, right, an image texture. There we go. Now, in this case, though, you'll notice we can make a new one here. So we could actually make a new one from right here instead of there. We can open if we want to browse to find one. Uh, but in this case, there's already one created, so what we can do is we can click on this one, and we just pick that untitled, which is that checkerboard, right? And there we go. And you see we have uh, our texture on there, and we have our UVs. Now at this point, uh, I'm going to go back to 4 for object mode, and I'm going to go back to the blue wrench, just a little bigger, because um, I want to add the modifier, right? And remember, you can kind of make these bigger or smaller as you work. Um, depending on how big your monitor is. If you've got a good size monitor, you don't have to worry about this. Um, we have smaller ones in our classroom, so um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we go back to the blue wrench, because that's our modifier. We go to add modifier, and we just do mirror again. And there we go. Now, in this case, we really are going to do sculpting after this, so I can just apply that mirror. And there we go. It's duplicated over, it's sewn up. Now, you will notice if I go to three for face mode that. Um, the same UVs are on top of each other, right? There's actually going to be uh, two shells. So if I click on one of these shells, um, you see how they kind of uh, move together? So uh, keep that in mind, right, that uh, these are the same UVs on both sides. So when we go to texture later on, they're going to be identical. Uh, can you repack these or relay these out so they won't have that? Yes, you can. And we'll address that on later uh, projects. We're not going to worry about it on this project. Uh, we want it to be efficient. It's often a pretty popular game trick to use the same texture on both sides. Uh, that way, 
like if you create a 2048, it acts like a 4096, right? It acts like it has twice the resolution because um, you're loading in just the one texture, but it renders on both sides. So at rendering time, you take the full hit, but uh, loading into RAM, uh, putting it on a, a Blu-ray disc or a download, it's a lot smaller because it's half the size. Um, you do lose asymmetry, right? It has your texture will be identical on both sides because the UVs are on top of each other. Uh, so you lose asymmetry. Uh, so that your texture on this side will have to be identical to that side, um, but you gain um, kind of more resolution, right? Um, you're, you'll only have to have a 2048, but when it's rendered out in game, it'll be a 40 and a 6. It'll, be, it'll look twice as big. Um, so that's a popular game trick, to sacrifice asymmetry to get more uh, resolution while still keeping file sizes down. While keeping file sizes down. Um, and we'll talk about more how you can do asymmetric UV wrapping. You don't have to do it this way. Uh, film doesn't, right? Um, they want full asymmetry. They don't have to worry about super efficient pipelines necessarily. So uh, just kind of something good to know. And for us on this first project, this is going to make it simpler to UV unwrap half, mirror it over, and then yay, be done, right? But we do, we are going to lose the ability to do um, asymmetrical texturing. So whatever texturing we do on one side will have to be identical on the other side. Uh, like I said, that's not something that has to be done in Blender or 3D software, but uh, for us it's useful and it's a cool uh, efficiency trick for video games. Uh, so in this case I'm going to hit forward to go back to um, object mode. And remember up here we have our collection, which is really just a way of saying like a group uh, or like a, a sub-scene or a mini-scene if you will. Um, and there's my crab body, so I can turn the crab body back on. Uh, we'll turn the crab gear off. So remember these, those little eyeballs that'll kind of allow you to select them, but also turn them off or on. Of course, you can click on them when you're in object mode. You can click on them in the viewport. And you can see the distortion grid is on this guy because there's one default material that's on everything that's in the scene. And so once we created that texture and applied it to that, it's on everything, right? So it's kind of on all of the stuff. Um, so really easy to apply that material. Um, Textools has a cool preview way to do it, um, which is marginally easier, but it's kind of about the same. Um, but uh, we can see that we don't have to keep reapplying that because that default single material that's on all of our objects is on this guy as well. And so this texture shows up on it. But we can see that it's horrible, right? You can see that we're seeing here that this isn't bad, but this is pretty disgusting, <laughs> right? That's pretty bad. Um, you you want to see checkerboard, right? That's indicating that you have low distortion, that your UV and wrap is going to work well, and when you paint stuff, it's going to look nice on your model. So if you see this, that those UVs are, are in decent shape. Those are in pretty good shape. You see this, and they're in horrible shape. That's bad, right? So if I was to say go to 3 for face mode and Control A to select everything, we could see that that does not look like anything resembling a crap. Um, now in this case, remember, I do want to um, simply just um, kind of get rid of half of this, right? So three for face mode, of course. And if you double click on a face, or a, a right around the edge around the face, remember it selects the edge of that direction. So if I did it here, it selects it that way. So uh, face loop selecting in uh, Blender is actually awesome when you understand that, that little nuance about it. That basically, uh, the closer you are to the edge that's perpendicular, it'll select the face loop in that direction. Uh, so I want to select the face loop that way. Uh, so remember, it's just double click though. It's just double left click. You just have to be in face selection mode, three. And then it's double left click. Uh, but do it close to the edge perpendicular to the face loop you want. Hit delete, right? To delete quick key, pick faces. And then of course we could do um, select linked, right? So I select the face on this one. Select linked. Uh, of course you can set up your own quick key for this, but uh, if you don't have one, and it's like uh, right bracket. Uh, right next to enter, that's the default quick key. I just would rather have it closer to my uh, left hand on the keyboard. So I picked a more ergonomic quick key for that. Remember, it is in the select menu, select linked. We'll hit delete for delete faces again. And now we have half of our crap. Now at this point, I don't really want to see this distortion grid. Uh, so remember, one of the things that you could do, I can minimize that again, is remember up here you have these shader types, right? That's showing textured, but this shows us just shaded. So you can actually switch between those pretty easily um, to just see the model without the seams. And so now what we have to do is we have to set up the seams uh, for this guy. So uh, two for edge mode, right? Because uh, our seams are edge loops. So we hit two for edge mode, right? Edit mode, edges. 
And what we could do is we could start to go in here and deselect or de uh, um, double click to select edge loops. Uh, so remember right here, uh, I have the tweak tool on, but you can use the regular select box, right? Uh, remember if you hold down left mouse button, you have these right here. Uh, so I can double click, uh, shift, double left click, right? Shift, double left click to select those edge loops around. Uh, and I can do the same thing here, shift, double left click, shift, double left click, shift, double left click. And you'll notice I'm selecting edge loops kind of right around where the leg connects to the body. Because what we want to do is we want to have these legs be their own shells, their own islands, right? Um, so I'm going to shift, double click, shift, double click, shift, double uh, click, right? And that's double left click, and shift is adding. Now the cool thing is you can mark these seams so that you can forget about them and deselect them. If you right click, right, it brings up edge context menu, and you'll see there's an option called mark seam. And now those are seams. Uh, we'll do the same thing kind of for the antenna up here because basically it's a head leg, right? <laughs> so uh, double left click, shift double left click, right click to mark seam. There we go. Um, that should work good for those. The body should be able to unwrap on its own pretty well without any seams. But we, what we do need though is we needed these seams here so that the antenna can fully separate off onto its own. And each leg can fully separate off onto their own part, right? Their own UV part, their own if you will, UV object. Um, they're often called islands or shells in packages, like Maya would call them shells. Uh, Blender, I, I believe, calls them islands. Um, so, uh, but what we need, though, is we still need extra seams on these because if we just leave it this way, it's not going to do a great job. It's going to flatten these. So we have to kind of almost view these like long cylinders, right? Uh, think of clothing, right? If you look at your sleeves on your shirt, particularly if it's a long sleeve shirt, right, you have a seam at the arm to detach it from the, the chest and torso, and that's what these guys are. But you'll also notice, uh, particularly if you have a long sleeve shirt on, right, that it ends at the wrist. Here we don't have wrists, so we don't have to worry about that. But there is a seam that goes underneath the arm, right? There is that seam underneath the arm. So what we need to do is we need to make that so that it properly can kind of peel and unwrap it, right? So. Uh, particularly when you're doing characters, creatures, and bodies with appendages, think about clothing. Where are the seams at on a shirt? Where are the seams at on pants? Um, and that'll give you a great guide. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to select, uh, and it's a good idea to always kind of hide them more on the bottom if you can. So I'm going to select that edge, and I'm going to go up to here, and I'm going to shift select this edge. So I kind of do one kind of right here at the base where this other seam's at, because you want this seam to be fully connected to this one. Um, otherwise, it'll unwrap weird. So we do want an edge here, kind of at, uh, kind of perpendicular to the seam here. And you notice I kept this edge that I selected here on the same edge loop, right? You don't really have to, but it's better to do it that way. There is a select tool in Blender uh, called um, Shortest Path, and you see I've already assigned a quick key to it, but it doesn't have one by default. And what that does, it actually is range selection. A lot of you guys, some of you guys remember this from Maya um, for the six of you guys that were with me last year, Maya had a version of this. This is actually a pretty standard thing to have in packages. So what it does is it selects the shortest path between two edges. So in this case, you know, we picked this edge and then this one, and then it just selected the edge loop in between them. We can then right click to uh, mark seam and we could go do it over here. So left click on that edge, kind of touching this one right here. Uh, keep on the same edge loop, and you'll notice that you don't have to go all the way up. So if you've got a, a long, complicated thing, you know, you might just go to here and then do select uh, linked shortest path. Oop, sorry, I deselected those. Uh, select shortest path, and then what you can do is you can keep adding, right? Select shortest path, and you see how it keeps adding to that. And then, of course, right click, mark seam. And then we'll do it on this leg right here. So um, pick that edge. And then we could shift left click here, select linked. And you notice I have a quick key for that, right? Shortest path. And then we can just go add another edge on this same path, select linked, shortest path, and it just adds to that. Um, so that's a great new tool. So once you start really seeing all of the uh, Blender uh, selection workflows, it's actually pretty great. It's actually got a pretty excellent set of selection tools. Um, so in this case, I'm going to right click, right? Because right click brings up the edge menu. And we pick mark seam. And we'll see that that's all marked for us. And then we'll do something similar with the antenna. 
Um, probably better to put it maybe kind of in the center here. So I'll select an edge there. But see these edges always touch the red seam that's already there. And then of course we can uh, shift click on the top here, but on the same edge loop. Although if it isn't, the shortest path will still try to do its best path to there. So the, sh the selecting shortest path is adaptive. Uh, so there we go. Right click, mark seam. And now we've got nice seams for this crap. And so what we can do is, of course, go to three for face mode. Control A is select all, right? So three for face edit mode, select con all. Control A is for that. And then what we could do is, with all those faces selected, we go to the UV menu, because we're in the UV editing workspace, right? We go to the UV menu and we can hit unwrap. And then if we want, we can kind of go back uh, to, whoops, and Blender crashed on me. That was great. Um, <laughs> lovely. All right, uh, let me uh, relaunch Blender. That is something you will not normally see. Blender will not normally crash like that. Um, that was kind of a little crazy. Um, fortunately, I had saved just about every seam, so this will be pretty quick to do. So just go here. Mark seam, or uh, I'm just going to use the quick key for shortest path that I set, right? Uh, mark seam. There we go. Three for face mode, control A, just hit uh, that quick. Uh, and in this case, I might just um, quickly turn this guy back on, right? So we can see that. And then, you know, three for face mode, control A for select all. Uh, UV unwrap. There we go. And you'll notice we get an actual pretty good, uh, pretty low distortion unwrap for this guy. Uh, you will see that these claws here get a little bit kind of uh, bigger. So that might be one of those things where it's just a little easier to maybe have a few extra seams, right? So I'll go to two for edge mode. Because um, I don't really want to go into live UV unwrap with you guys yet. And since we're going to be doing 3D projection painting, uh, seams aren't that big of an issue. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just mark some extra seams there. And then what we can do is we can hit 3 for Control A, and then just go to uh, Unwrap again. And you see how if you break it into more parts, it'll often do uh, an even better job of um, giving you uh, low distortion. And why in the heck did that get tweaked there? Let me bring that guy down really quick. There we go. But you'll notice that we have pretty low distortion now, right? So we can see that this actually all looks pretty checkerboard-like. And remember, we're not necessarily trying to get zero distortion, just low distortion. Um, 3D projection painting can often compensate for some level of distortion. Um, so this will give us a pretty good UV unwrap, particularly for our first model, right? Uh, I'm going to go to uh, 3, Control A to select everything again. And remember, the only thing we might need to do is just uh, do a little bit of a repack here. Um, so I can select everything in there. Go to UV, pack islands. In this case, you can already kind of see it was in pretty good shape. Um, but sometimes what you'll do is you'll just kind of maybe bring this up here a little bit. R for scale. Remember, if you are um, if you have all your faces selected here, so remember 3 in this view, Control A to select all. When you come into this view and you have your cursor in the UV editor, 1, 2, and 3 and 4 work independently in here than they do here. So you can go to 4 for object mode here, and it lets you select shells. And just things like move rotate and scale will allow you to kind of just go in here and quickly make minor adjustments to the shells, right? We always want to try to take up as much space as possible, right? Because any any of this texture that's not under the UVs will not show up on your model. Um, so when we're packing stuff, we're trying to make sure that this is optimized well enough to take up a lot of pixel space. Um, obviously, there's only so much space and, and only so big these can get. Um, so it is kind of one of those things where you play around and you make a little adjustments to try to pack more effectively. But remember, uh, object mode select can allow you to do shells, and you can easily do things like move, rotate, and scale to kind of position these better. Um, and that should work as a, a pretty good first unwrap and pack for us, right? Um, so at this point, of course, we can um, save that. Four for object mode. Go to uh, add modifier. Remember that's in our blue wrench. Add modifier, mirror. There we go. And then of course, if we bring crab gear back up, you'll see we ultimately have some pretty good UVs laid out on that, right? Uh, if there's a little bit of distortion, that's okay. 
3D projection painting can compensate for that. Also, this is our first model, um, and this is going to gonna work pretty well for us. But there is something called uh, live UV unwrap that allows you to adjust these a little bit more. Um, but for us, uh, just having a few more seams worked great. And you see that this looks pretty checkerboard, and that's what you're looking for. If you've got strong checkerboard um, on your model, then your UVs are ultimately going to be pretty good and, and work pretty well for texturing. All right. Uh, so that's great. Um, and I barely lost anything with the crash, so I was able to come back in and boop, finish it up for us. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be a great place to stop for that video.